toxic masculinity is a myth. While you might not agree with this statement right out of the gate, give me a chance to explain before jumping to conclusion. First of all, let's look at the definition of toxic masculinity, as described by Wikipedia. Toxic masculinity is thus defined by adherence to traditional male gender roles that restrict the kinds of emotions allowable for boys and men to express, including social expectations that men seek to be dominant and limit their emotional range primarily to expressions of anger. Now, on the surface, this looks like it makes a lot of sense, right? But we encounter a few problems when we dig deeper. Problem number one, masculinity and toxicity are like oil and water. They cannot mix. If we look at the definition above, we're led to assume that traditional masculinity is defined as nothing more than emotional bankruptcy, suppression, and a never-ending battle to determine who is showing off maximum machismo. But this is far from the reality. While it's true that the early 19 created toxic behavioral patterns primarily in men due to the individualization of society caused by the Industrial Revolution and two world wars, this is not what most people would consider traditional masculinity. It is a very narrow view of masculinity that ignores more than a millennium of masculine tradition that is entirely antithetical to this way of being. For centuries, strong men such as Alexander the Great, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Buddha, Marcus Aurelius, Benjamin Franklin, and a plethora of others exemplified and encouraged a version of masculinity that was very different from what we see the political pundits demonizing today. True masculinity is about living a life of virtue. Classical thinkers believed that men should strive to cultivate virtues that would lead to the highest good for all humanity. Virtues of honor, loyalty, temperance, prudence, honesty, diligence, fidelity, humility, and kindness were lauded as the epitome of what it meant to be a strong man. But those virtues have largely been forgotten and replaced by the bastardized version of masculinity we see around us today. You see, toxicity and true masculinity cannot mix. They don't go together and they never have. An individual acting out in anger, attempting to assert dominance through fear or force, or belittling those around him is inherently non-masculine. Similarly, an individual who lacks the self-awareness to ask for help, or refuses to ask for help out of some sort of perverted egoism is not masculine. He's a little boy who is acting like a child, not a man. When you look at pretty much every great tradition throughout history, especially Eastern traditions and classical philosophies, you'll find a very different picture of what masculinity really is compared to how it is portrayed today. Until our society can separate these two points, it will never be able to reap the benefits that the masculine energy which, by the way, is not exclusive to men can provide. A more accurate assessment of toxic masculinity. While I don't believe in toxic masculinity as it is portrayed in the mainstream, the attitude that masculinity itself is toxic, I do believe that the vast majority of modern men have fallen prey to toxic behaviors. The masses of men today do not have a clearly defined purpose or set of passions that drive them. They are driven primarily if not exclusively by the desire to earn more because they conflate self-worth with net worth. Lack the humility to ask for help and believe that it somehow makes them weak, even though almost every ancient culture considered camaraderie, social support, and teamwork to be integral to authentic masculinity, have become weak because they view drive, ambition, and assertiveness as toxic. Even though what is really toxic is the proliferation of nice guys who use manipulation and faux kindness to get what they want refuse to take responsibility for their own lives and instead see themselves as victims of the system, which may in fact be true, but does not exonerate them from taking ownership of their futures. Sedate and distract from the pain in their life instead of facing it head on, which is infinitely easier today than ever before with constant entertainment, easy access to drugs, and the distraction culture in which we live. So yes, I do believe that most men today are trapped in toxic patterns. And on the surface, it's easy to conflate these patterns with masculinity itself. But when you dig deeper and understand the true tradition of masculinity that was upheld for thousands of years, it's plain to see that what we are experiencing is largely a result of cultural and technological shifts, not a result of masculinity or of men gone bad. True masculinity is healthy because true masculinity is predicated on authenticity, service, virtue, and character. What we see today isn't masculinity at all but a bastardized version of hedonism that happens to be most applicable to human beings with a dom. 